guys. Hi Hi. Everyone. Hi. Welcome to the second installment of Serafina Magazine Live. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Cam Bernstein and I'm the founder of Serafina Magazine. So now, the reason you're all here, which is not to hear from me, but to hear from them, these three need no introduction, but I'm going to give a brief one, if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so first up, we have Jennifer Stain, who was recently seen in the Baxter Theatre's return production of Lara for the Inconvenience of Wings, a role which awarded her a 2017 Fleur de Cap Award for Best Actress. <laughs> And then we have Sandra Prinsloo, who is about to step into the Fugard Theatre production of The Road to Mecca. <laughs> and right on the end, we have Susan Danford, who was recently seen in the Fugard Theatre's production of Clybourne Park and uh, nominated for a 2017 Fleur de Cap. We're going to jump right into it with just a little bit of an icebreaker. I wanted to ask you guys about your first professional production out of acting school. Do you remember what it was? And um, is it something that happened quite quickly <laughs> after graduating, or did you have to hustle for a while? Well, I remember it very clearly. I, um, I got a contract, and then it was packed, you know, the Performing Arts Council of the Transvaal. And it was a comedy, and I'd never done comedy at Varsity. I always thought I was more of a drama queen, more serious. And, I, <laughs> and it was called Die Laste van die Takhara. My lung and work for and I was absolutely dreadful, but <laughs> but I looked very nice. So I was very pretty, I a really nice costume, and I, but I remember I was completely out of my depth. And if it hadn't been for Marius Vayers, I think I would have been completely miserable. In fact, I did want to get out of that production. I thought, no, I'm not doing this. I'm going back to varsity, and I'm going to study. I'm going to do academia. Um, but then I had so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, I was fortunate that we got. Um, permanent contracts, so <laughs> whether they wanted you or not. <laughs> <laughs> My first job ended up being with PAC, but it was freelance. I had to audition for it, and uh, the director was very comfortable in telling me that I didn't audition well, but I looked like the part, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> there was no merit for the, my audition, but it was in The Grapes of Wrath, and I played Rose Ashoran. And uh, yeah, I ended up yeah, it ended up being fabulously reviewed and yeah. I was at varsity in my last year, so that would have been nineteen eighty three. And Annie Barnes, who just recently mm -hmm. passed away, mm -hmm. like really yeah, young, um, wrote a children's show. Um, and I had the classic thing, I was in seventeen eighty nine um, I, I don't know what references you guys have, 1789 was a very successful UCT um, uh, production from UCT and I pulled out of that to, to do this children's story to earn my first buck <laughs> and, <laughs> and I played um, a rag doll with contemporaries of mine that I just loved and I was brought right down to earth, right in my first job, <laughs> with uh, one of the kids going, Ugh, you're not a doll. <laughs> <laughs> and it was interesting, you know, that I, that I turned down this, you know, if I look back, that I should have been in that other production, but, you know, I earned my first uh, money. <laughs> but I'm sure it also prepared you for the future critics. I mean, after that comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was probably then that I decided not to read them until I was finished the production. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you were, you know, recently out of uh, acting school, university or whatnot, did you know that this would be something that you would do for the rest of your lives? I oh, wish I moved with some sort of agency. I had... I just tumbled along. I don't know. I don't think I gave it much thought at all. <laughs> 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 you know, the kids, um, kids, the young adults who graduate now are just so, yeah, so sharp and with it and sort of have some sort of trajectory. And I just, I don't know. I don't think I gave it much thought at all. I was renting a room at a friend. Um, and as long as I had lines to learn, I seemed happy. And if there was a couple of gaps in between, so be it. <laughs> in my first year, I really thought, no. I, actually, at drama school, I didn't think I wanted to act at all. I always said I didn't want to be an actress. 
I don't quite know what I was doing there, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to be an actress. Then I so, was... So, to not to take you off your story, but so what, what did you think you wanted to be? I didn't really know, oh. but I thought maybe... You weren't sure you were It was safer right to direct, little did I know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I mean, I was so naive. Yeah. But I got this contract, which I actually turned down. And then, then at that time, Francois Swart came to me, who was then the artistic head of Pact, and said to me, well, will you just do two plays? I said, all right, I'll do two plays. And I was still <laughs> lecturing. And the first one, you know, as I told you, was <laughs> I was very happy. But the second production was, um, um, what is it in English? Uh, the genre of Orpheus and Eurydice, um, mm. and we did that, and I got hooked then, wow. doing mm. Orpheus and Eurydice, playing Eurydice was marvellous. I mean, nobody in fact wanted Maurice and I to play it because they thought we were too young and had knew nothing, and they were quite right, we didn't know nothing, mm. but but <laughs> we, we actually managed to crack it with Francois' help. And um, I think after that production I felt, yeah, this is gotten into my blood. Mm -hmm. And then I accepted a full-time contract the next year, and, and that was it. And, yeah. Yeah. And then just next can you remember what it was, what, what that thing was? Yes, I can, actually. I can. I remember one night being on stage with Marius, um, and we had a scene, and it's the scene after Eurydice dies in a, a bus, I think, runs her down or something <laughs> terribly romantic <laughs> like that. <laughs> and he comes and he plays his violin, and then they have a they talk. And, and I remember that night, it was as if I know this is going to sound corny, but forgive me, but it was as if some sort of magic net descended onto the stage. And even the, the much older actors were standing, all coming to the wings and were standing and watching. And it was that magical moment of something that had happened that you had no control over, that you, I don't know what it is, what is it when that happens? And I remember it so clearly. It's a curse. Transportation into some other, like another yeah. realm that is absolutely so incredibly real mm. and also mm. like not or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, and so immediate and very, very magical. That I, no, I knew. I was told from very little, you know. Nobody seemed to pay attention to any other qualities I might have had. It was just like she's going to do that, you know. <laughs> and I sort of regretted that a bit. Like and that being theatre? Yeah, yeah, I mean, she's going to be an actress. Oh, know. okay. I thought, well, like, well, what about the other things that I could maybe be? You know, why is not anybody paying attention to that? But, um, <laughs> and so, so <laughs> you're like a physicist. But I think I knew that uh, that was what I wanted to, to do. do. And I think that I feel the same. Mm. No, I don't really feel, um, sometimes I felt a pressure to, that I ought to direct or that I ought to do this or, you know, I need to, you know, get more strings to my bow, or, you know, um, but I still feel that actually if I could just be an actor until the day I die, because of course you're going to have to be one until the day you die, <laughs> <laughs> then, 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 so yeah, I think it was quite clear for me that, that that's what I wanted. Well, at this point in all of your careers, I don't know if you still audition as often as you mm. used to, but I wanted to know if you had any audition horror stories you would like to share with all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have an actress, I mean, uh, an agent in my early years because it wasn't necessary because, you know, this was back. Then I got an agent, and in her wisdom, she sent me for an audition for a film. Mm. And I'm using my words advisedly. <laughs> I was asked to audition for a gay, um, 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 oh, um, said, oh, hang, on. No, uh, hang on, hang uh, on, uh, 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 a gay vampire nun, vampire <laughs> nun, <that's right. laughs> gay vampire nun, I was like, how do I do this? <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and she gets eaten by a crocodile, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a singing audition? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can hold the tune, but, you know, but 
the beauty of thinking, well, I must just go there and you know, <laughs> do my best. <laughs> and um, in my youth, I, I trained in contemporary dance and in fact was also confused, even though I was a drama school about ever did I want to be an actress. But, um, the teachers who I absolutely adored was Robin Orlin and Sonia May. In fact, so when I did my um, singing audition, I'd never been coached on how to, so I did moves with it and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think I traveled across the entire state. And I did quite well. And then there was this deep hole in the back of the auditorium. Thank you. I never experienced that because in drama auditions, it's always a lot more intimate. And, and then I left and just was mortified because I realized very quickly that I had no idea what I was doing. And they were quite happy to see the end of my audition. My worst was actually quite a recent, not, so maybe three years ago, or I can't remember. But it was, was it Troy or like one of the ones before? The first, um, so where they they say it's simulated sex, you need to do there's you there's nudity, black the, sales, uh, or of oh, oh, uh, it might have been black sales yeah. or one of those, yeah, 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 but yeah. maybe black sales. Um, so um, swords uh, and sandals series. Anyway, so I, I, I was a desperate to, um, desperate to crack, you know, just get into a, a, a televisions. T do some television and some film, be in front of the camera. And, uh, you know, p people who know my career, I don't have an issue with nudity. I'm maybe like 50 or maybe 49 or something, or, you know, 50, 51, 52, whatever. I can't remember the exact time frame. And uh, I go, yeah, yeah, of course, no, nudity is no problem. I spend the whole afternoon and I find this outfit in my wardrobe. Yeah. Uh, which is quite beautiful. You don't really see anything, but basically, I've got a g-string on, and, and it's covered. It's a it's a cloth kind of, but very fine. And really, I'm quite exposed. Like my ass is quite exposed. <laughs> and I go and I do this audition, <laughs> and um, and I do the audition, and as I come away, it would be, it, I just think to myself, what on earth? It was horrible, horrible in my sense of self, and horrible in that I realized that sure, in, in nudity wasn't an issue, but did I want to do? And then watching that that, that stuff and thinking, you know, simulated sex is is okay if there's something magical in the uh, in, in in the program or or something, and then I just. So it was just, um, so I, I actually revealing something quite, uh, was quite, um, not just so funny actually. Mm -hmm. It was a real yeah, revelation to myself uh, that um, I really didn't need to be so exposed. Um, I could have said I had no problem with nudity and, and, and trusted my own sexuality and just sat in myself. And I got myself into a complete stunt because I was so hungry to do uh, yeah, to be to yeah. do to, to work in front of the camera yeah. again. Yeah, I feel like it's it's kind of uh, difficult to jump over that. So instead of doing that, I kind of wanted to ask the three of you because you do all work with you know a lot of young people and um, most of you teach or you're working with young theatre makers. So what advice would you have for people who are kind of experiencing those desperate moments and thinking of really putting their integrity aside for the sake of their career? Don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've answered it. Yeah. Cool. I think, and also then you start leading the, the narrative as well about it because, um, you know, the process, the people taking the auditions, running the auditions, the information you get about what the role is about, um, all that information needs to come to you so you can make an informed decision in with some sort of context. If you're just given a little piece of paper and you said be there tomorrow or on Thursday at 11 o'clock yeah. mm. and you've got to sign this clause. I mean, I think that clause that you're talking about is, you know, it, it, it's like, what am I signing? Am I yeah. signing for what role? I haven't read the role. I haven't read the story. So if you're signing that, it, it means, I don't know, maybe you were playing the vampire nun and you didn't know that, but nuns, nuns strip in this show. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's like you don't know 
where that's going to end, especially for film and television, because that footage exists forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the right, if you haven't met the director, if the director is not going to be in the room when you're signing that clause, mm -hmm. you know, um, like what story is he telling? You want to know, you know, before you sign that. Yeah. And also, I think if you if you're uncomfortable, if you're uncomfortable in a part, you can't really give yourself to it. So you can't really do good work. So mm -hmm. what's the point? But but it, but ironically, it, uh, it, is it not something that one le it learns? You often learn it by making that mistake. By um, th you know you think you think you know who the director is. You think you know what the part mm -hmm. is. You think mm -hmm. you think this is going to be you know this this has got to be good quality. It's got this that 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 and. It, 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 it isn't it isn't always um, you know and it crosses all kinds of things you know it, um, p it, your politics comes into it you know with you know what do you get involved in uh, mm -hmm. politically where do you place yourself you know how do you how do you want yourself to be um, seen and heard um, so mm -hmm. uh, perhaps the most practical kind of advice is when you get that call to do something so, you know, from your agent, or e maybe even within the industry, is to just to give yourself that moment. Say, "Oh, thanks very much. Let me just give this a moment. I just want to, and then and then do your own research and just give yourself that beat mm -hmm. before you get gushy." The era we're in as well. So, contractually, like um, uh, having worked in Canada for a while, those contracts with my agent there, when it comes to, um, I was involved in an all-female. It was like a female directors, writers, actors, and so when the, the clauses that were in those contracts for any nudity or any intimacy, were, because it was on camera, was incredibly specific. Mm. Mm. And it came ahead of the time. So it wasn't like, um, are we going to have a creative day? <laughs> With the camera. There was instruction on exactly when the moment was, what body part was exposed, how, where the camera is going to be, so your agent also, the agents need to support it and the casting directors. So from that point as well, that it can be in a contract. It's like what, how much, where, and why. Thank you, Thank you for answering that. Um, I wanted to know if there's any role that you've done in the context of your career, be it film, TV, theatre, that you wish you could revisit. I do feel that I was cast too young in something once, yeah, and it was, um, and I just had all these fantastic actors all around me and I was flailing and I just, I just knew I was way too young, I didn't have the experience to, to pull it off because it was, you yeah. know. But I think that's not always necessarily bad because yeah. sometimes it yeah. brings something else to the role. I don't tend to look back very much I suppose, but um, I once did repeat a part, I we did this Scottish play, and I played Lady M, and I didn't like it, and I didn't like what I was doing. And then a number of years later, I was asked to do it again, and everything in the back of my mind said, don't do this again, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't any better <laughs> for me. My experience of it was I should have left it at the first attempt, um, whatever that was, just... That was it. Um, yeah, I have played. I played Hedda Gabler three times, but luckily in different mediums. I've done some of the Chekhovs, Seagull. I've done. I've played all the parts except the oldest, which is the next one. <laughs> I remember Exit the King, uh, which uh, I did with the wonderful David Minar. That I was that I curtained down. I went. Oh, that's what I should have done. I should have done. <laughs> <laughs> and it was one of those. I just like was battling all the way. And I, went, mm -hmm. and I played the doctor, and I just you know, mm -hmm. and went. It's just like literally, like when we finished it, I went. That's what I should have done. Mm -hmm. But I had no desire really to actually go back there. Um, <laughs> I just have a few more questions for you. Um, I wanted to know if you feel like there's something you feel like you haven't <coughs> explored artistically yet in your career. I mean, obviously as actress, yes, that's why we Oh have. yeah, hundreds, yeah, hundreds, yeah. hundreds and hundreds yeah. of Masses. Yeah. Every sure. day is an exploration yeah. Yeah. of yeah. finding yeah. new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
when you invited me here, you said the sort of doyens of the theatre. I went, oh my God, a doyen, what's that? I thought that was, yeah. you know, but... Um, it means one foot in the grave. Yes. <laughs> 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 so, 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 so is, um, I'm really, and I'm sure I can speak for women younger than me, older than me, my age, whatever, so hungry for women's narrative. And so hungry for exploring the internal landscape at whatever age or decade. There seems to be major gaps in storytelling or the stories that I'm certainly able to tell at the moment. It's just, it's, it's either, certainly in film and TV again, you're either yeah. casting for um, a 40-year-old woman, and I'm not 40, and, or I'm somebody's granny and... You know, that I need a walking stick and I need, and I was going like, where are, they, where are these beautiful stories with all these women in between, with all these extraordinary life experiences and challenges? And, and so obviously it's a challenge we all need to take on. And I'm, you know, I really kind of feel, well, am I going to take on that challenge? Well, I'm not a writer, but I certainly can collaborate. And I think mm. those stories, there's so many women's stories, so many South African stories in general that still need to be told. So, of course, a lot still to do. Uh, uh, no, but I, I do fantasize about, you know, because there is that thing where you can character sing, you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I can, I can sing a little bit. I, I, and my pitch isn't bad. Uh, uh, and my range isn't bad. Jenny, I've heard the you sing. Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> But I've got to have a lot of quite a bit. Were you drunk on stage? Uh, uh, no, what do you mean on stage? <laughs> oh, on stage is my early days. Yeah, I did. Sing. I do fantasize about. Uh, Singing. The singing again. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, where you can... Talk you know, sing. Yeah. I did like that in a pantomime. Sort of a I mean, cabaret type yeah. kind of alternative cabaret. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so in keeping of, with the theme of Serafina, the last question I ask in every interview is who are some women that inspire you? And the three of you have already answered that. But I wanted to know what is something that's currently inspiring you? My work inspires me. My work... Mm -hmm gives meaning to my life and so mm. how can that not be inspiring? You know? mm. I think I pull down from a lot of different influences so not necessarily within um, film or theatre but life really. Mm. Um, I have a lot of interests and I sometimes get completely distracted and forget that I need to be in the profession. <laughs> so and then I think that's also good because it it fills you and it brings a brings a sense of wonder that I think um, and curiosity that I like to bring to my you know to texts that I work with or, or certainly texts that I, I want to work with. I think uh, truly what does inspire me is the tenacity on a on a on a national scale and I say on a South African scale of South African artists in general, because mm -hmm. I do think mm -hmm. the, the independent work that is happening out there, that it is not recognized with some sort of respectable national budget. Uh, and the work that I see happening independently mm -hmm. just knocks my socks off. And at the same time, I feel a little bit of a, a sadness because I go, where is, where is the upliftment and this mm -hmm. national support? Um, and yes, those yes. bigger budgets, just just give texture and depth, so that so that actors and and artists can say, oh, I'm gonna, I'm aiming to go there, and then hopefully if that happens, then I can get a bursary to go and do that, and then I can get funding for this new piece I'm trying to run. It's incredibly frustrating. So inspiration for me is the tenacity of. South Africans in the arts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I add something? Just young people. <laughs> young people. I've been working with young people. I cannot believe the amount of talent, the amount of ins I mean, the inspiration that they give you. It's extraordinary. I mean, I, I'm always uh, in awe of the amount of work you do, Sandra. You know how you. Um, you know, you go to festivals and you'll do four shows and then you're in a television series and then <coughs> you're there and then you're there and um, it's, it's, it's extraordinary uh, how, you, how you do that. And lucky. Um, y yeah, you, uh, you, no, no, not, not lucky. Um, uh, perhaps best that you can hold all that at once, you know, 
I am I can do one thing at a time. I'm a one thing at a time person. And um and and so 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 Sandra's often a sort of iconically in the in the background in my head going, um, you know, as a as a it's like a focus as a focus thing that I can uh, push myself because I kind of go. But Sandra's doing like four shows. Just get on with it and do this one show. <laughs> 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 All about and you know collapse in a heap. <laughs> I, I do a lot of that as well. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I really appreciate that about you. Um, um, is, so, so then to come to come to what uh, you know, it, it, I think it's ever changing, and I'm sure we've all just spoken in the moment about where we're at now. So Sandra's with. Um, to Mecca and Susan's with life at the moment. And I'm with, um, having just finished Wings, I'm very with um, South Africa. I think I'm with South Africa a lot, like obsessively a bit. Um, and at the moment I'm with, um, you know, who tells whose stories. And um, it, so I'm so hungry to engage on a floor. Uh, so I'm trying to conjure a sabbatical for myself where I can engage on a floor with uh, people and then maybe make something, write something, and um, uh, observe a process. Um, and, uh, you know, I was thinking about all the things. I'm very fascinated by, you know, what do we want? You know, what does South Africa want for itself across the board, you know? So then, you know, what, what's important and what do we want? Um, and then, uh, it's sort of it's 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 being revealed to me that really the story that I need to tell is my, is my, you know I need to I need to speak for myself from from my internal world. Um, that doesn't mean I, do, I can't engage with all kinds of people. Um, so I'm trying to conjure a way to uh, tell a story from myself that engages all kinds of people and see if I can get a sabbatical funded.